Good day, my friends. Jewel here with your tropical update for Saturday. Right now it is the 22nd of August, 2020, and boy, the weather is wild. From fires to tropical weather to tornadoes happening to ratios happening, it's just something everybody needs to be aware of. And this morning through Later this afternoon, I'll have another update, but right now, what I want to talk about and show you is some possibilities and some scenarios, and everyone needs to pay attention. Now, I noticed this late yesterday evening, but I kind of dug into it this morning. Been working on this information for hours, trying to make sure... I could bring you the best possible information. And by the way, before I get started, thank you all my new subscribers. Thank you all my old subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe, click the bell, and make sure that you've got all checked off so you get all the latest videos I put out about the weather. I would greatly appreciate it. Now we're looking at the tracking maps. These are all of the models, and it's the uh, late model guidance models I have up, not what's going on right now. Do not worry for all of my island friends. I will be getting to that. But first off, I want to talk a little bit about the Fujiwara effect. Now, the Fujiwara effect, of course, was founded by a Japanese meteorologist named Fujiwara. And what it all boils down to, folks, this is when two hurricanes are spinning in the same direction and they pass close enough to each other that they begin to in, do like a little dance around each other, okay? And that's at the center, the common centers of each other. Now, don't get scared by something I'm calling the Fujiwara effect. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not saying this is going to happen at all. What I am saying is, Coming up, if you're in the Gulf Coast states, next week, you really need to pay attention. Now, let's get to the really serious stuff as to why I'm saying all of this. All right, these are the late model tracks. These are Marco's tracks, okay? This is the official track by the National Hurricane Center right here, as you can see. And they've got it coming into Texas with wind speeds of about 30 knots. Once it gets way up into Texas, when it comes into Texas, down around this area, this is the official track of the National Hurricane Center. But we have all these other models, right? Well, you know, the National Hurricane Center isn't quite sure either, and I'm going to show you something in a moment. But once again, we have these models. This is Marco. This is Marco right up in here. Okay, you see all of these different models. Well, here, look at the models for Laura. Here's the official track for Laura. They've got it coming in down around Louisiana at 65 knots. All of these models, the point I'm trying to make, are leaning more westward. And at some point, they could get within 800 to 900 miles of each other. I'm thinking that Marco will move a little faster, but there is that concern. So let's look at that right quick. Before, before we go look at something else right quick, though, what I want to say is if these models keep moving more westerly, and they've moved greatly over the past 24 hours, as you can see, some models have this not only Marco going into Texas, but Laura going into Texas. That's when we could have that effect happen. It's not going to turn into one big, great, major, mega storm if this happens. It, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. As of now, that's what I'm saying. We're going to look at both of the scenarios because these tracks are getting too close together and moving westerly. It could come up into New Orleans, or it might come over this way. The GFS has it doing this effect 
and moving further. And when Marco goes up, it's going to be a big butt low, okay? Well, you know, I've told you forever. Lows pull and highs push. Laura could get pulled up over this way. We'll have to wait and see. One thing that the National Hurricane Center and I agree on is the uncertainty of the initial motion of Laura. There's no change in this track philosophy right now as a subtropical ridge over the central western Atlantic is expected to expand westward, causing Laura to move quickly west-northwestward for the next three days or so. But this is what is important. You have to pay attention. This goes along with what I was showing you. After that, the storm should turn northwestward toward the western edge of that ridge and over the northern Gulf Coast. Now, while all of the dynamical models are in good agreement with the general scenario, which is their official forecast, there is an unusual amount of cross-track spread, as I've just showed you in the spaghetti models. Now, the track guidance is spread from the Florida Keys to the western end of Cuba as a storm enters the Gulf of Mexico, and the models have potential landfall locations along the Gulf Coast from the Florida Panhandle to the Middle Texas Coast just like I picked out and showed you. Now, as we look at the world consensus model matters here, all of the world consensus models, if any dancing's going to go on with the Fujiwara effect, it's going to happen right around in here. Now, these storms have to be at least eight, a little over 800 to 900 miles close. What I'm thinking is this. I'm thinking that Marco is going to move just a little faster once it gets here because it's weaker. And this, of course, is a Hurricane Laura at this time. This is around between Tuesday night late and early Wednesday morning right in this area here. So let's go check some more stuff out. Now here we have the European model. I know you guys like to look at this. Here is Marco, here is Laura. I've got this set for Monday evening around 7 p.m., okay? Around 7 p.m. So we're just going to let this run real quickly for a moment. And you can see they're not dancing around each other yet, but they're trying to start to dance. But Marco moves into the Houston area as Laura is still out in the Gulf. So we're going to go back just a second here. As it approaches, it's looking like it's, I think, I'm pretty sure at this point it could change. It should stay a tropical storm with wind gusts of tropical storm strength as it moves in around this area. It might not be just at Houston. You know how these things bounce around, but it's going to be somewhere over in the Texas area. Then we have Laura over here. Her winds are 56 mile per hour gusts, so she's picking up strength now, and she's about to get right to turn into a hurricane, I do believe. So, once again, this is what it's looking like on the Euro model, model around 11 a.m. Tuesday morning. We'll switch over to the GFS model. There is a different scenario. It goes back to those spaghetti models. Here we go. We have Marco off the coast of Texas. We still have Laura just about in the same vicinity. But we will go back right quickly to the Euro model. And we will move ahead to around 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tuesday. Well, Marco's already gone through. And Laura is here. Moving through. Looking like going up into Louisiana and Mississippi. So we'll move up to Wednesday around 8 a.m. Still hanging off the coast, but it's moved a little bit farther, the center of circulation to the west. Now, this is the Euro model. Let's go to the GFS. It's got it going a little slower, building strength still out in the Gulf here. Okay, we'll stay on the GFS for a second. We'll move up to around 7 p.m. Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, you can see it's moving closer to Houston 
as the European model at the same time as it making landfall in Louisiana. So these are two possibilities, folks. Don't put all your eggs in one basket yet. There's two possibilities. I'm not saying that this is going to play out this way. It's 2020. The weather's wild. I'm just trying to show you what the possibilities could be. And as I just showed you, the National Hurricane Center also is not sure. It may go on this track that they're showing us now, which is off of the European model, more or less, or it may go with all the consensus models in the end that are leaning more towards the west and bring it into Texas. Laura could go into Texas, as you see. If she does go into Texas, she's going to have some winds of 75 miles per hour. She will be a hurricane. So these are just some things I've showed you. Now let's go check out some more things from the National Hurricane Center. Here's the latest tracking map from the National Hurricane Center for the morning portion of today. We do have tropical storm warnings up all the way down around Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, portions of Haiti, also the islands, and we have tropical storm watches in some of the islands in Bahama, the Bahama area. Now, the official track that they've put together as I've showed you, they're not sure this track is going to play out entirely. But it's looking like that Laura, she's going to go over a lot more land than it looked like yesterday. So she should remain a tropical storm, not turning into a hurricane until she does reach the Gulf. And this, remember, they've got this cone a little bit wider now and I'm expecting it may widen a little more. I think Laura will come anywhere in now from the Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, or Texas areas. It's going to bounce around. It's going to do a lot of things. I've just showed you this stuff to show you what could happen in scenarios, okay? This is what it's looking like right now, though. When we come over and look at the uh, latest tracking map from the National Hurricane Center for Tropical Storm Marco, Marco should remain a tropical storm. This is pretty much pinned down, even if they were to get close together with a Fujiwara effect. This one is not going to do a whole lot. It's not going to do a whole lot. I'm just telling you, it's a tropical storm. You need two hurricanes to do this to make them merge together and finally get on up there and be a bigger hurricane. But I don't think a major hurricane is going to come out of any of this as of now. Who knows? This afternoon, tomorrow morning, I may be singing a different tune. But as you can see, this is going to come into Texas, the Texas area here. And... It won't stay a tropical storm too long before it turns into a depression. Watches and warnings for Tropical Storm Marco. And once again, please click show more below the video. I'll have this information there. You can read it all in detail. I'm not going to go over all of this, but we do have a hurricane watch in effect for Punta Herrero to uh, Cancun, Mexico, and a tropical storm warnings also of in effect from Punta Herrera to Dezilla, Mexico. I probably pronounced that wrong. Forgive me if I did. Now, it's looking like also, as we move down slowly but surely here, like I say, I'm not going to read all of this, but rain, 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 rain is going to be a lot. Now, the uh, tropical storm conditions are expected to first reach the eastern Yucatan coast within the warning area this afternoon. It's going to spread northward and westward within the warning area tonight, making outside preparations difficult or dangerous. Hurricane conditions are also possible within the hurricane watch area by this evening. And so far as the rain goes, Marco is looking like in the eastern portions of the uh, Mexican states, of Quintana, Rue, and the Yucatan, three to six inches, isolated maximum totals of 10 inches, far western Cuba, one to three inches, and of course, you could have some flash flooding. 
For Tropical Storm Laura watches and warnings, the government of the Netherlands has discontinued the Tropical Storm warning for Saba and St. Estes, but we do have Tropical Storm warning in effect for Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, St. Martin, St. Martin, and St. Bartholomew. Now, all of these places, once again, I'm going to put in the description. Please click show more. You can read more about it and get all of the information. I just don't want to make this video entirely so, so long. Looking like rainfall. Three to six inches of rain over Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, the Dominican Republic, and the southern Haiti Peninsula and eastern Cuba through Sunday. Some places could get up to eight inches along the eastern portions and the southern slopes of Puerto Rico, as well as over Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and eastern Cuba. This is heavy rainfall, and it very well could lead to flash and urban flooding, as well as increased potential for mudslides with minor river flooding in Puerto Rico. One to three inches of rain, with some uh, isolated maximum totals of five inches, are expected over the northern Leeward Islands, the Turks, and the Caicos, and southeast Bahamas. And the tropical storm conditions are expected within portions of the warning area today through Sunday. Remember that. Today through Sunday. Tropical storm conditions are possible within portions of this watch area Sunday night. So please be aware of that. We know that we're going to have great swells affecting portions of the northern Leeward Islands, and they're going to spread across the northern coast of Puerto Rico, Hispanola, Cuba, and much of the Bahamas during the next few days. And as we wind this up, here is Marco, and as of uh, 7 a.m. this morning, CDC time, and of course, 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight time, Marco has 50 mile per hour winds. Now, right now, of course, all this can change. I can't stress this enough. It's looking like Marco may reach 70 mile per hour winds at some point, but that's not a category one. That's a high end tropical storm. But right now, they're 50 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure, 1,002 millibars, located 20.2 north, 85.2 west moving north-northwest at 12 miles per hour. And then we have Laura. Her winds right now are 40 miles per hour. Looking like the highest winds for Laura will turn into a Category 1 hurricane with 85 mile per hour winds. The current central minimum pressure is 1,006 millibars. It's located 17.7 north, 66.0 west, and it's moving west still at a good clip at 21 miles per hour. It's going to be interesting to see as it moves over the Dominican Republic area and also Cuba, how it's going to interact with all the mountainous areas. We'll see what happens. I think it may stay a tropical storm. We're going to have to wait and see, but once it hits this hot, hot water, it's going to turn into a hurricane. And another thing we need to think about, yes, these storms could cause a lot of problems, power outages for days on end, all kind of things, you know that. It could also maybe affect the oil rigs and the gas, so you need to think about that too, okay? We got this little system over here now, the National Hurricane Center says it's going to fizzle out. Well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? But right now, showers and thunderstorms have decreased this morning in association with this tropical wave near the Cabo Verde Islands. Now, additional development is unlikely to occur as environmental conditions are expected to become unfavorable as this system keeps moving westward over the tropical Atlantic. They're giving it a 10% chance now for two days and five days. And that's a check of the tropical weather this morning. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, you have a good day, a safe day, and a blessed day. I'll have another update late this evening for you. This is what it's looking like right now, though. It's going to be a very, very interesting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday coming up, folks. Anyone that lives along the Gulf Coast states, from the Florida Panhandle all the way to Texas, you make sure that you don't get cut short. And everybody, 
East Coast states, Gulf Coast states, please, now, if you don't have them, now is the time to have your kits and your plans ready because we haven't even got to the peak of hurricane season yet. Stay safe, my friends, and much peace, love, and kindness to each and every one of you. Thanks for watching.